You read the title right, I played a hundred solo queue games of Dead by Daylight. Now you may be asking, why the hell would you do that? Well I have heard from a lot of people as a killer main that solo survivor is a death sentence. Now I didn't understand what they meant by that, I mean I'm a clown main. Every match I have is great for survivors. But when I took a step back, I realized I didn't play that much survivor in comparison to killer. So in an attempt to understand what they felt and also gain popularity from it by making a video off of it, I decided to do 100 solo queue games of Dead by Daylight. For each of the matches I recorded 4 things, which killer it was, what perks they ran, what map we were on, and if I escaped or died. Now for the 3 people that see this video and are wondering how Dead by Daylight plays, I will explain. You and 3 other players are tasked with completing generators around the map. There are 7 generators in total, and if you complete 5 you can power the gates and escape. However, there is also the killer who is tasked with taking you down. If you are found by a killer, you go into a chase where you must use the terrain to your advantage by throwing down pallets or vaults and windows. The goal of a chase is simple, stall as long as you can. A good team will be doing generators while you're being chased, which is why it's, it's important that you can last a bit in chase. It's also why killers like the nurse are so overpowered because she circumvents your only tools to escape, being the pallets and windows. However, the trade-off is how long you need to use her to be at a functional level. For the killers, surprisingly enough, I had zero clowns or twins, and that breaks this clown main's heart, if I'm being honest. I get he's not good, but absolutely zero people in a hundred games picked clown. Trapper and Nurse Hag, Freddy, Demo Puppy, Pyramid Head, Blight, and Trickster appeared once in my 100 games. Doctor, Pig, and Cenobite showed up twice. Wraith, Huntress, Oni, Bubba, Spirit, Plague, and Dredge showed up three times. Billy, Slinger, Artist, and Mastermind showed up five times. I was most shocked by Mastermind not being in the top five considering he's the newest killer added to Dead by Daylight as of November. At number 5 is Onryo with 6 games, Nemesis is in 4th with 7 games, Ghostface gets the bronze medal with 10 games, and there is a tie for 1st with Michael Myers and the Legion with 11 games. Honestly, I never got tired of Michael even after 11 games, can't say the same about Ghostface or Legion though. The perks are way longer, and frankly I don't want to list them all, so they'll just show up on the screen. However, I will talk about the most popular perks. In a tie for 10th place is a Nurse's Calling and Call of Brine, which were both used 9 times. We have another tie for 8th and 9th place, with Corrupt Intervention and Eruption being used 10 times. There is a tie for 6th and 7th place, with Noed and Thrilling Tremors being used 12 times. In 5th we have Sloppy Butcher, which was used 14 times. And in 3rd place there is a tie with Save the Best for Last and Jolt, which were used 15 times. Getting the silver medal is Lethal Pursuer, which was used 17 times. Now, personally, I think this perk is kinda overrated, but I have to admit it works really well with our number one perk, Barbecue and Chili. 21 killers ran this perk, and that's kind of impressive when you consider that Barbecue and Chili is a perk from a killer you have to buy. But yeah, it's not even close which one is number one. I bet this number would be higher if it still gave blood points though. Seriously, Behavior, why did you have to neuter this poor perk for no reason? In terms of maps, there's a lot less to say. In 4th and 5th place, we have a tie between Midwitch and Grim Pantry, both being played 5 times. We have another tie for 3rd place, with Dead Dog Saloon and Irie of Crows being played 6 times. In 2nd place, we have The Game, with 8 matches being hosted on this map. And finally, with 9 matches being played, is Mount Ormond. Having almost 10% of my matches on this map is kinda insane considering that there are 38 maps in the game that could have been chosen in comparison. That being said though, I still get lost on Gideon's Meat Plant despite how much I played on it. Now this is probably the category you were waiting for. How many matches did I win and how many did I lose? I counted a win as simply the act of escaping through gate or through hatch. No arbitrary win conditions here, only what the MMR cares about. Are you ready for the results? Well over the course of 100 games I escaped 54 times. Yeah. I had a 54% win rate, and considering that behavior wants a 50% win rate, I fell pretty much exactly where they wanted. 
and this kind of comes to an important conclusion. As I went through this, I noticed a lot of what I did as killer wasn't fun to face as survivor. Being tunneled out or camped on my first hook felt terrible, and frankly, it kind of gave me a new perspective that will allow me to be a better survivor and killer. Frankly, I feel like this community lacks perspective, and I know everyone loves repping their side, and it feels like a war against both sides at all times, but if you play both sides, you benefit from it all. Whether a survivor gets buffed or a killer gets buffed, you should play both sides. You're not going to win every game, and on my 8 game win streak, I knew it had to end at some point. My longest losing streak was 5 games, comparatively. Maybe if everyone stopped acting like victims, this game would be better for everybody. Killers shouldn't be afraid of being reported for nothing or being hated for playing the game, and survivors shouldn't be yelled at for doing their generators too quickly or for looping effectively. Now this doesn't include any toxic behavior of course, but most people just want to have a good time in a game they truly love. I expected my win rate to be so much lower considering how survivors talked about solo queue, but I won 54 matches with only one of those matches beating me escaping through the hatch. At the end of the day, we're all just playing a game and it shouldn't be taken so seriously. Thank you for getting to the end of the video. I'm sorry for coming off so preachy at the end there, but something had to be said. That being said though, I'd love to do something like this again, and I already have plans on doing a killer 100 games, or doing a revamped version of the solo queue challenge where I play with zero perks to see if the game is truly balanced for all players, even if I have no competitive edge. Give me your thoughts down below, and I hope to see you next time.